Welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have got 12 knee pads that we are going to be discussing. And uh, before we get into each of the pads and talk to you about them and our impressions, we just wanted to thank CompetitiveCyclist.com for being our retail partner for 2021. Um, we did a lot of hard thinking about it, um, talked with Competitive Cyclists. They were really awesome, very supportive in giving us absolute freedom. Um, one of the great things about partnering with a third party retailer is that they are brand agnostic. We can you know, criticize and critique products um, and they don't take it personally and we can really get into the nitty gritty on products. And uh, so they've been awesome enough to supply us with all of these knee pads. They're gonna be supplying us with a lot more products in 2021. And we really look forward to um, bringing you guys a lot of awesome reviews on products that you can find for sale at competitivecyclist.com. Make sure you use Lone Wolf 15 for 15% off any applicable items on your first purchase. Um, thank you guys again. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the knee pads. So uh, basically what we've got here uh, are two segments of knee pads. Um, some pads kind of blur the lines, but we're gonna basically start with some of the lighter, thinner, um, everyday pedal friendly knee pads and kind of move into some of the bigger, burlier, um, you know, downhill type knee pads and uh, kind of just give you guys some options and let you know the impressions that we've had on the pads themselves. So first up, we're gonna look at the G-Form X2s. Now, I know it looks like I've got really small legs um, and maybe I do, but these are actually the kid size X2s, um, ours, after very much use and abuse uh, got retired to the trash bin and we uh, mistakenly threw them away before the uh, arrival uh, of our order from competitive cyclists showed up so they didn't have a replacement in stock so they sent us the kid size um, but that brings me to a cool topic um, they're one of the few brands that have an actual small kid size knee pad. So these things are really cool. Um, you know, one of our members here at the Lone Wolf has two sets of these for his kids and they absolutely love them. So uh, the adult size version of these pads are still gonna be um, highly recommended by us. So not just kids are gonna benefit, but we've had a lot of our riders put time in these pads. The looks are slightly polarizing, um, and, and we are aware of that. G-Form has been aware of that. They, it's, it's their brand identity, but they've got a lot of new pads in their lineup, and uh, while we might like the looks of those better, there's no denying that this has been one of the most popular and top-selling knee pads for the last several years, um, and the reasons for that are many. It is extremely thin, light, breathable material, the padding itself um, has some, you know, ventilation pass through here. It's not very thick. Uh, it, it's not going to be cumbersome, hot. You're not going to feel like you're wearing, you know, a big bulky pad. So for that reason, a lot of, um, you know, experienced riders who want a minimal pad or newer riders that maybe don't feel like I need to invest in some big bulky thing, um, but they want to, you know, not skin their knees up if they hit the deck. This is gonna be a really solid option. Um, and uh, again, we've put a lot of time in these pads. The, the technology that they have in their material uh, is, is really impressive. So um, G-Form uses what's called a Smart Flex Foam. And uh, it's, if you've watched any of their videos where they drop things from outer space, like iPads <laughs> wrapped in this stuff and it still works, it's, it's pretty cool. So. Uh, yeah, G-Form Pro X2 knee pads, definitely worth checking out whether you've got a kid or uh, you're an adult looking for some lightweight protection. All right, so next up we've got a pad that um, I wore a lot last year and, and we did a detailed review of them on our website uh, and that is the Fox Enduro. Um, now if you remember in our review I, I kind of had a little issue with the naming of the pad being an Enduro. Um, they are cool, they're protective, uh, they feel pretty safe. I just, I wouldn't classify them as an enduro pad and I feel that the, the naming is a little deceptive or misleading. Um, you know, I typically would put enduro pads in a little bulkier state, but nevertheless, 
Um, the Fox Enduro pads are pretty awesome. Um, and again, I, I've really liked them and worn them quite a bit. Uh, they've got a fully ventilated back panel, so uh, they're gonna be pretty breathable and nice um, D3O protection. There are some Cordura reinforcements here on the high impact zones at the front of the knee. Uh, the D3O material is also pretty well ventilated. So as you're you know, pushing on it, um, you know, if we had it in your hands, you could see there's a lot of holes in that D3O. So um, they do a pretty good job of breathing. Now, as you can tell, they are a pretty flat knee pad. They're not preformed like you know, many of the others. And we thought that might be an issue when it came time to you know, riding and, and discomfort, but they actually form pretty nicely. There's some uh, relief cuts in this D3O material here and here along with this little wing. And that allows the pad to very nicely bend and, and form around your leg as it is pedaling. Um, you know, whether it's as good as some preformed pads, I guess, is, is debatable. And I think everyone's leg shape and the amount of time they spend standing, you know, post ride or, or while hiking versus riding and just taking their pads off could have something to do with, um, you know, what you think is going to be best. But one of my favorite lighter duty trail pads, without a doubt, I spent a lot of time in these. So, uh, the Fox Enduro's definitely not the right name for that pad in my opinion, but they're awesome. Next up, we've got the Cali Strike. And um, these are actually a pads that we've not spent a ton of time in so far. Um, we got restocked with a new set, so we're gonna uh, give these to another one of our testers for even more time in them. But uh, so far we've been pretty impressed actually we like them a lot it's got uh, a little bit of a molded shape here a little pre-curve so it's going to hug the knee nicely um, the fit on this uh, which I guess I should address every one of these is a size medium um, you know some are small medium uh, but for the most part I, I fit kind of firmly in that medium size knee pad um, some pads right like this fox the Callies um, fit a little bit on the large side. The Fox is snug. The Liats are snug. Um, so I'll, I'll try to address those moving forward um, before I get too far uh, down the line, I should remember. These fit snug, so, so do your measuring. These definitely fit a little bit on the loose side for a medium. Um, and uh, yeah, besides that, really cool features. They've got some thick, gripper material on the inside. <clears throat> At first, uh, when we first started kind of pedaling and moving our legs in these, the, the silicone gripper on the back almost seemed too much. Uh, you know, if you're maybe like got really hairy legs, um, that might be an issue. Like it's, it's a pretty grippy silicone strip and very thick. So um, we did notice on some longer pedals and longer rides that it would start to irritate a little. Once you start sweating, um, that would kind of help a bit and, and kind of work on, but um, definitely something worth noting there. Now moving on, it's got some EVA padding on the side. One thing that I guess we might be a little critique is that the, the EVA pad is above and below where the pivot kind of on your knee is. So that middle part doesn't have any padding, um, both inside and outside. Whereas, you know, if you look at say this Liat, it's got three pads um, inside and outside. So you do have a little bit more, you know, material right in that center spot, which is, um, you know, definitely a spot I've hit my knee either on the frame or on the ground. So uh, that would be one area I think I'd like to see a little bit of improvement on. Um, the the, the protective material is quite pliable. It conforms nicely, when you, especially when you heat up. It's fairly breathable, allows for nice air movement in through the front, out through the nice mesh in the back. Um, it does extend longer, both uh, you know, here in the stocking or the sock and the pad itself. It is longer than the Liats. Um, so it offers some of the longest protection range out of the trail level padding. Um, so that's a feature I really like. You get some more shin protection. So 
if you are like a, a trail bike shredder, but you, you want to have a pretty good coverage area, this is a solid pad. Um, you know, when we did some, some kind of drop tests from the knee down to the ground, it's really tough, but these may have felt a little bit more cushioned than those Liats. Um, it's, it is a little bit firmer than some of the D3O and G form types, not to say that's going to protect better. Um, but just to the touch as you're touching the material, obviously the, the D3O does a great job of hardening up, but, um, you know, when you knock on that, it, it feels like a little bit harder pad. So if you live in a super rocky area, um, again, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a marketer for D3O, but common sense in my brain and, and experience tells me that having a little bit harder material would allow, you know, better sliding across, uh, rocks and hard surfaces when you impact. So those are things I do like about the Callies. Uh, solid pad overall. So next up are the Liat Airflexes. Uh, these are pads that um, our tester Nick absolutely loves. Um, he wore his for like two years straight until the seams started falling apart and he couldn't actually wear them any longer. So we've all put a lot of time in the Airflexes. They're a great trail pad. Um, definitely a, a, a highly recommended knee pad from from our team they they kind of blend um, you know some nice features from like more aggressive pads in that they've got pretty solid you know foam on the outside nice foam here above the kneecap so that you know kind of bottom of the thigh should you go over the bars or, or hit your stem um, has a nice little bit of padding there no fasteners, Velcro, or anything like that. It just relies on uh, a silicone strip on the inside. Not quite as thick or grippy as the Cali one, um, but you know that also makes it a little bit more comfortable maybe, maybe to more people. Um, again, the sizing, as I mentioned on this, is snug. So if you're in between, you may want to go up some or you're going to have a, a definite break-in period until things you know stretch out a little bit. But uh, solid pad overall. Definitely like uh, the, the 3D impact gel technology that Liat employs. Um, solid knee pads again, and I've got no issues recommending these at all. Okay, next up, we've got the Troy Lee Designs Speed Sleeve. Um, now these pads are, I'm gonna admit right off the get-go, probably the ones that we've spent the least amount of time in haven't had any actual crashes on the trail in in our other set um, but i i don't know there there's good and bad about these pads i guess um, you know i remember talking to to troy lee at sea otter i guess two years ago now when these were relatively new and he said this is like their top selling knee pad um, they move more of the speed sleeve than anything else so Obviously people love them, and I'm sure that the reason they love them is comfort. Uh, I, I kind of have called these like that old trusty pair of sweatpants that you have. Like these are the sweatpants for your knee. Um, and I don't mean that because they're gonna be hot, but they're just so comfortable. It's like putting on a sock or something. It's, um, it's almost counterintuitive. Like, you know, I, I haven't gotten a chance to really ride them in super hot temperatures yet. Um, but this material doesn't look all that fancy. It, it just kind of looks like a giant weave like that you'd find on a sock. Um, but when you put them on, like you don't notice they're on. Like it, it literally just feels like you're wearing a pair of long johns or something underneath your riding shorts. So um, that being said, comfort's great. The D3O material that they use is very thin. Um, I mean, it's, you know, minimal. If again, you know, you're in that G form kind of level, like you just want something really light, really comfortable, something that's not going to be big or bulky, you know, the speed sleeve might be a great option for you. Um, so again, I don't, I don't really have any huge critiques or criticisms, uh, other than they're, they're kind of basic looking, but God, they, they feel great on, they don't offer a ton of protection. So, D3O, but you're very thin amount um, and it's going to be kind of like an abrasion protector. So uh, yeah, if, if that's in your wheelhouse and you want something just really light and minimal, give those a try uh, or check them out. But uh, solid trail pad. Moving on. 
we'll get into the ions. A lot of these pads have either used, uh, you know, D3O or the brand's own in-house material. Ion is using SASTEC, which is uh, another really reputable, great brand that um, has a lot of knowledge and expertise in creating, um, you know, smart impact absorbing material. So uh, the, the K trays, I always have a hard time saying that, um, by Ion are a pretty cool pad. Um, they're sort of a hard shell, but light duty trail pad at the same time. Um, although I would maybe start pushing these towards that 150 mil travel kind of category. Um, you know, if you're a really good, confident rider that, that doesn't go down much and you, you want something that's light, uh, but if you do hit the deck, we'll still offer some protection. These are pretty awesome pads. Uh, again, there's some really solid ventilation here around the sides. Um, still a little bit of padding and protection, but I mean, mi very minimal, um, but a lot of airflow. There's some protection here with some foam uh, on the side. And then once you get into this hard center cap, you've got a, a really nicely protected knee area. Um, that kind of extends down to the upper shin a little bit. So they are super light. Uh, you've got a pretty large, nice uh, Velcro adjuster on top combined with silicone grippers, both on the top and bottoms. Um, some nice relief cuts here to really allow for some nice, you know, conformity around that calf muscle cut out in the back. These are a, a, a cool pad. I would say that they're a bit warmer than um, you know, the Liats, the G-Form, Cali. I would, I don't know, maybe argue that I would feel a little bit safer in these if I were to, to hit the deck on, you know, more aggressive high speed stuff just because of that hard cap, but not quite as much as if I was, you know, kind of getting into this ballpark. So if you are maybe like a trail rider, um, e-biker that, that, goes out on long rides, you know, maybe somewhat warmer climates, but like you still have a lot of rough terrain. Um, this could be a solid option for you. Um, you know, if you, if you are a trail rider, but you just think these might be a little too thin or lightweight, I wouldn't put any doubt in these cause they are very capable, but this would kind of be your next step without going full on into this kind of bulky, uh, knee pad land. So, um, yeah, ion K, K trays, pretty solid option, um, which also brings me to another really cool knee pad that I like, and that is the Fox. All right, so another pair of Fox pads. This is the Launch D3O. Um, as you can tell, right, just by kind of comparing both of these Fox pads, there are some very different, uh, I don't know, design features in them, right? This is flat, this has got a bit of a pre-curved shape. Both employ D3O, uh, however, that's a slip-on. This has dual Velcro adjusters, a little bit more padding and protection all around. So uh, again, this is going to be for that slightly more aggressive rider. So if you're like an absolute aggressive 120 guy, but I would probably put this in the 140, 160 travel ballpark, as long as you're not like just shuttling like super gnarly 160 bike stuff all day, every day. Uh, you know, I've gone down on these pads, uh, well, not this exact set, but, uh, but our other set um, in some pretty rocky stuff at speed and, and they did surprisingly well. So I've, I've got a lot of faith in these pads um, and they are up to the task, but uh, they still pedal well. They're a little warmer than some of these lighter duty options. Um, I, would pro I would definitely say that they're a little bit warmer than those ions. Uh, op Obviously, they've got a lot more coverage area too, though, like they're quite a bit longer, um, you know, definitely more material. You know, if you look through here, you could probably see light through, you know, this breathable material, whereas this is kind of, it's, it's got some ventilation holes, but they're a lot smaller. So it's going to be a warmer pad, um, but they're super comfortable. So the launch. D3Os are a fully neoprene knee pad, so it, it's like a comfortable wetsuit once you put it on. Obviously, the downside is that they're, you know, a little bit warmer, a little sweatier feeling inside, but super comfy, super protective. Um, 
definitely uh, awesome pads and ones that I will continue to use and uh, yeah, definitely think are a good option. Okay, so next we're gonna move to the slightly more aggressive, uh, a little more robust pads. And we'll start out with uh, probably my least favorite uh, of the test, and that would be these POX. So these are the joint VPD system. And uh, to be totally honest with you guys, I just, there's very little I like about these pads. Uh, one of the things I really like is this, um, the material that they use. It feels super comfortable. It's very pliable. Um, you know, the actual like wrap around the knee pad of the material is, is like a pillow. It, it, it feels really comfortable. Um, you know, it kind of feels like if someone were to take a bat at my kneecap, like, I think I'd be protected with these. I also really liked this Kevlar reinforced stitching. Um, definitely ups the durability, uh, the abrasion resistance. Um, but what I don't like about it, one is the, the looks. Uh, it just kind of, it looks like they just stuffed padding and then like stitched a bunch of <laughs> material around it. The next thing beyond the aesthetics that, that really kill me about this pad are the, uh, this round VPD padding itself at the bottom it has like a hard hook like or like a cut back at the end of the material and the end of that material when you're standing up just digs right into the top of the shin um, and it's it's a hard edge so um, where that that material ends and kind of folds back over it just rubs on the shin um, not comfy and is honestly it's a deal breaker right combined with the fact that this is the tied with the IXS is the most expensive pad at 149 bucks. Um, the technology could be really awesome, but you know, bottom line, if it doesn't fit or feel right um, and isn't comfortable, it, it could be the safest thing. If you never want to wear it, then that, that doesn't help you much. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that love these pads and they might give me some grief, but um, I'm glad they work for you, but they, they don't work for me. Uh, they don't work for Sour Patch and uh, yeah, I think we're just gonna not recommend these guys very much. Uh, as much as we love that technology, that VPD foam that they use, um, yeah, those are a no-go. Moving on to a pad that is another highly recommended pad, not to toot our own horn, but we're very stoked that, that we were lucky enough to be involved with the development of this pad and a lot of our feedback and testing with G-Form. Um, about two years ago went into making this thing. So uh, naturally, I guess we're a little biased and, and really like these pads. So um, we'll kind of get into it. So the G-Form E-Lines are the only uh, pad in the mix with uh, the ability to be put on and removed without having to take your shoe off. So um, that is a really awesome feature. You've got a large, you know, ventilated strap uh, that has double layer silicone, big Velcro area. On the bottom, you've got uh, a pretty cool zipper that is protected, so it doesn't really rub on your leg very much. Um, so that's a nice feature. You can zip that up and then close that lower Velcro and they stay in place very nicely. I'm personally a big fan uh, when it comes to these more aggressive knee pads of having a hard shell. Um, you know, <clears throat> growing up, uh, riding and racing in, outside of Los Angeles on, on the super dry, rocky sandstone trails uh, in the Santa Monica Mountains. Uh, I just fell in love with having a hard capped knee pad. It, it would allow me to slide and skim over stuff a lot better than some of the softer pads that would kind of catch and spin and rotate. So <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a little biased there, but um, this is Sour Patch's new favorite pad. Definitely one of my favorite pads and uh, Everyone else on staff actually who, who's ridden these is very impressed. They're, they're big, they are, they're, I don't wanna say bulky, but I mean, they are a serious knee pad. So if you're needing something that has a lot of, of protective material, um, strong construction, this is definitely worth checking out. Um, <clears throat> G-Form uses their 
Smart Flex Foam, which we are, again, big fans of and, and does a lot of really cool stuff. And, you know, wrapping around that Smart Flex Foam is a very durable material that's going to resist a lot of abrasion. Um, so if you go down, uh, you're running through brush all the time. These things are definitely going to last. Um, we've got many pairs of these around and, and we're very happy with those. So uh, the G-Form E-Line solid pad in the Enduro uh, e-bike downhill super aggressive kind of shuttle guy probably even into the downhill like bike park shredder um, knee pad that that we really like okay uh, another pad that we really like the ixs triggers um, these are some pads that uh, this particular set here i've been wearing quite a bit for the last year or two um, <clears throat> ixs's x matter uh, smart foam does a really good job. It has a little bit of a kind of a hard skid plate down here. So, um, you know, if you're brushing against stuff uh, or going down in rocky terrain, offer a little more durability and, and kind of slide like I was touching on here. Um, <clears throat> some areas that we don't love about the pad are the lack of side protection. It does have some relatively small foam padding here in this center area. And, and they're nice because, you know, when your knee bends, they, they feel comfortable, they pedal well. Um, I'd like to maybe just see a little bit more, maybe a patch down here on that outside, kind of where that little knob <laughs> on the outside of your calf protrudes. They're pretty stout um, in, in terms of just like how long I've had these things, how much I've worn them. They still don't stink, which is awesome. They're comfy, they're, they're they're just a pretty solid pad. You can easily remove this liner, give them a wash if you need. I haven't done that yet, but uh, yeah, pretty solid pad. Not a huge um, sock, I guess, or sleeve above the knee pad itself. Another area I, I would like to maybe see improved in a future generation. Um, you know, if it was another maybe two inches taller or maybe just an inch and a half, that'd give a little bit more kind of wrap and and keep it in place a little better at the top but um, for the most part uh, a, a pretty cool pad and again i've i've kept these around and chose to put them in this kind of mix for a reason and that is i i really like these pads so so we'll move on to this next set of endura mt 500s okay so the endura mt 500 hard shells are uh, quickly becoming a, a new favorite for me. Um, I definitely plan on wearing these a lot more into the future. I've been pretty happy with uh, the, the fit, the comfort overall. Uh, luckily, haven't had to do too much impact testing on them besides just kind of the usual, you know, drop to the knees test on a few different things. Um, one thing, again, I really like about these is that hard shell. So, you know, when I would do the drop test, which we do to all pads on flat ground, um, you know, it, it does what it should do, especially with the D3O, it, it hardens on impact. Where I find that these excel is if I find like a sharp edge, right? Like if we test it on like the corner of a desk or if I go out into the rocks um, and I go and I land on the knees on a sharp piece uh, of, or a sharp object, a uh, corner, anything like that, that's when these things really do well. Um, having this hard cap really isolates that energy from a, a sharp pointy edge and um, again is, is why I'm a fan of hard shell protection. So uh, that being said, the system does lack a little bit on the outside protection in my opinion. You know, the, the D3O wraps over pretty well. I would like to see at least a couple of these key outer pieces be just a little bit thicker, even if it was maybe just these two or three on the top. Um, I, I would like to see a little bit more. The, the inside protection is solid, um, so you know you're rubbing or hitting your frame if you're you know trying to do tricks or in the event of a crash and you bash on your frame. I do like that protection there, but um, I wish it had a little more on that outside. Uh, two Velcro straps so you can kind of tailor the fit on the pads. Um, I will say the, the sizing on these is pretty spot on. They're, they're right in what I would consider like kind of like that solid medium sizing spectrum. Um, in the back here, you've got a mesh area that is breathable. Not as wide as some pads, but again, it's, it's a pretty burly, you know, heavy duty pad. So 
they're gonna make some compromises on this thinner material. The upside is that this material is always what gets eaten up the most by flat pedals. Um, you know, if you're hiking up trails, these always get cut, tuned, toured up. So um, that's gonna kind of help make these pads last and look better longer. So uh, yeah, thumbs up, I would say overall on the Endura 500s. Um, if you are looking for a, a pretty solid Enduro, you know, downhill focused e-bike knee pad, um, you know, and you like descending, these are gonna be a solid option. Okay, last up, we have got the seven IDP Sam Hill knee pads. If you guys watched our bike park review tour last summer, um, and if you haven't, we'll link it below, go give it a watch, it's awesome, and we'd appreciate it. Uh, we were wearing these pads, there was I think five or six of us out all summer, and uh, we all wore these things at bike parks all year long. Uh, they are definitely high on our list of, of uh, knee pads. So 790P, uh, as you guys may or may not know, is a brand that pretty much only makes protection parts from helmets to knee pads. So uh, they spend a lot of time, you know, working on protective materials and protective products, and that is it. So uh, the Sam Hills are insanely comfortable. Uh, one of, I'm trying to think if there's anything here more comfortable. Um, yeah, this might be this might be the most comfortable pad in the enduro bunch, and might even be more comfortable than some pads in the trail lot, which is, is saying a lot for a really protective knee pad like this. So, okay, so uh, beyond the comfort, some of the things that we really like about the Sam Hills are the overall length. Um, they might be the longest. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're the longest knee pad in the mix. They come way up on the thigh, so. Um, you know, whether you wear like a chamois underneath uh, like I do, you're going to get kind of double coverage, so they are not going to slip. They're going to stay up high. You've got a nice thick silicone gripper on top, silicone gripper on the bottom as well. Um, they extend well down below the knee, so you get some pretty solid coverage down onto the shin. Seven's uh, protective foam here wraps around like it goes above the kneecap, way down below and kind of fully envelops that knee all the way around. And then you've got a really, like a pretty substantial thick amount of foam that runs around that whole length. It's like a halo. Um, and it just offers a lot of protection, a lot of peace of mind. I would say that the seven stuff is uh, the most susceptible to the cold. Um, like when we store this stuff in the van or if it's in the garage and it's cold out in the winter, this stuff gets really hard and stiffens up a lot. Once you put it on within a couple of minutes, it'll warm up and start feeling a lot better. But um, yeah, obviously there's D3O, there's SAS Tech, everyone's kind of got their own material and it does seem like this stuff hardens up the most in the cold. So. Um, I don't know if that really affects much when it comes time to crashing because it's usually warmed up and on your body by then, but um, for what it's worth, that's something that we have noticed with this stuff. So the 790P Sam Hills, uh, again, are a, a really solid option in the aggressive to downhill terrain. Um, I, I wouldn't want to, I mean, I've, I've definitely pedaled in them, spent a ton of time in them. They're hot uh, for pedaling. So that would be something <clears throat> I would note. Um, that's not going to be a super pedally knee pad if you're like enduroing, I guess, and uh, you know, or even e-biking and you're moving just to get to a downhill. Definitely a solid option. But if you are doing lots of ups and downs, there there's pads that will breathe better than that. So I'm gonna try to narrow this down a little bit for you guys. Obviously, I liked a lot more of these pads than I disliked. Um, I think that's probably natural one. A lot of companies are making really cool products these days. It's like bikes, right? It's, it's pretty hard to find stuff that just sucks. Um, two, it doesn't really do us a lot of good or, or you guys a lot of good if we just pick stuff that isn't that great and tell you it sucks for no good reason. So I wanted to highlight stuff that, that we could find, you know, that is good, that is stuff we recommend. So, you know, these are all options for the most part that I think are gonna be good investments and protection for you guys as riders. 
but I'll try to narrow down a couple of my favorite picks out of these 12, um, and hopefully that'll help you guys out. So, if you're really light duty, minimal, not looking for a lot of protection, you know, maybe you're kind of like that newer rider that's just like, I just want peace of mind, but I'm not going crazy. I just don't want to fall while I learn how to mountain bike. G-Form, Fox Enduros, uh, the Liats, solid options. Uh, definitely going to be good. G-Form is probably going to be the lightest, thinnest, mm, possibly the most comfortable out of those options. If you're going to that next level, you're, you're a trail rider, but you're a little bit aggressive, you like pushing the limits a little bit, um, Fox, Cali, Liat, all gonna be pretty sweet knee pads. You will see me and our other testers wearing all three of these pads quite regularly. These pads are gonna be reserved, I would say more for those days that we're not quite trail riding, but we're not downhilling. Um, you know, if we're out doing some e-bike laps on, on some warmer days, we want more than this, but not quite this. But I'd say both the Ion and Fox are pretty good options, but uh, honestly, like, the triggers and the E-lines are so comfortable that <clears throat> these are kind of in a weird gray zone for me a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like them but they could be good for you guys if you don't want to go to this level of protection, but you're a little bit, you know, unsure as to how much these are going to do. Both of those are rad. Fox has more coverage area, probably feels a little more comfortable, cushy inside. <clears throat> the ions are smaller, they're lighter, they're more breathable. So whatever out of that is more important to you, those are solid options. Now, when we get up here, uh, E-lines are solid, guys. Um, I like the fact you can zip them on, zip them off. I didn't think I was going to like it, for the record. Um, that was something that G-Form kind of uh, resisted. My, my feedback when they were designing these was not to do that, because I've never had a zip-on, zip-off pad I've liked. Um, they, they proved us wrong. They did a great job. So really like the E-lines. Triggers are good. Um, Probably not my favorite out of this bunch. Uh, I would say that the seven Sam Hills are solid. And uh, as of right now, I'm liking these Enduras a lot. So we'll do a long-term review after we spend a lot more time in them soon. So um, yeah, I'd say E-Line, Sam Hill, Endura, Trigger, all great options. But I think I'm leaning here, guys. Um, so that's that. Uh, once again, we would like to thank our friends at Competitive Cyclists for um, teaming up with us, having faith in us this year, and uh, letting us do really cool videos and test a ton of product for you, our viewers. It would be super awesome if you guys were interested in making any purchases to click that link down below as it helps us uh, show that we bring some value to CompetitiveCyclist.com and will continue to allow us to make these rad videos for you guys. On top of that, you might get a 15% discount if you use Loam Wolf 15. So thank you guys again for the support. We appreciate you watching, and we hope to see you out on the trails.